Hello Cal Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and today's lesson we're going to talk about the first derivative test. The first derivative test is, kids sometimes think, oh man, uh, this is like a test? No, it's not a test in like an exam. It's the first derivative test in calculus is where we use the first derivative to help us test things that are going around on with a function. So when we use the first derivative, it tells us if we can find a max or min. So let's start off with things that we know, and that is a quadratic function is, uh, the graph of it is a parabola. So here I've given you f of x equals blah blah stuff. Now I know it opens up because it's positive, it's opening up here. So it has to have a minimum. So here's our graph of that parabola. And let's figure out and talk about some things about the behavior of f prime. So what's happening with f prime? Right here, the slope because f prime is the slope, the slope of f is negative, right? So on this side, I have f prime is less than zero. Or in other words, it is negative. Over here, I have that f prime is positive, greater than zero. So I'm going to put in parentheses that it's positive. Okay, they, they mean the same thing. And then right here at this point, right there, f prime is zero. The slope of it is zero right there. So what I have is a situation where f prime is negative, becomes a zero, and then it becomes positive. So when you have this situation, you have negative slope of zero, positive, you have a minimum. Okay, that's what's going on with this. Now let's do, uh, what if it was a maximum? If I had f prime, you, your slope would be positive. And then it's going to change, instead of saying zero, I'm just gonna say that you have what's called a critical point, which we've practiced over and over again. So the critical point is where the derivative is either zero or does not exist. And so it, it goes from positive to your critical point, and then it goes, the slope becomes negative. So this could be an example of something like this, like a cusp, like that. So maybe the critical point is not the slope of zero, but the, the derivative does not exist. So that would be a maximum. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. We're, we're just doing one more step. You've already figured out how to do intervals of where it's increasing or decreasing. So now we just throw in the understanding of a critical point and is it a minimum or a maximum? That is the first derivative test. You've really already been doing it. So here's our justification statements and these are important because this justifies using calculus whether or not you have a minimum. So we let's say a C and D, we're gonna say that those are critical numbers. We've already found the critical numbers, it's C and D. There is, an, a, there is a minimum value at X equals C because F prime changes signs from negative to positive. That's how you justify that you have a minimum. It changes signs from negative to positive. Again, this is only if you already know that it's a critical number. And then there is a maximum value at X equals D because the other way, f prime changes signs from positive to negative. So the first one, negative to positive. Second one, maximum, because it's the slope's going from positive slope to negative slope. And sometimes you might just have to draw it on your paper real quick to remind yourself, what is it doing? What's the slope acting like? Going down and then going up, that forces you to have a minimum. All right, get that written down and let's go on. Let's take this first problem and use the first derivative test. So. The first derivative test states that we first need to get the critical points figured out. So let's take the derivative of this thing. F prime of X is going to equal two thirds and write slow, uh, excuse me, slow, write small because I don't think I gave you very much room on your notes. Sorry about that. I'm trying, I was trying to cram it all into one page. And then I go, let's see, subtract a full one, you get negative one third. And then you have to times it by the derivative of the inside using the chain rule, we get 2x on the inside. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. And I came up with this for the simplified derivative. And that's helpful because now we can see, remember what we're trying to do? We're trying to figure out when is f prime uh, doesn't exist and when does f prime equals zero. So it equals zero when the numerator is zero. So that's simple enough. We're going to have a critical point at x equals zero. And then we have a critical point when the denominator is zero. So if I take this x squared minus four and solve it, I'm gonna end up with x equals plus or minus two. So I'm gonna have a positive two and I'm going to have a negative two. There's my three critical points. So now you set up your little chart of values. So I am going to have an x and I'm going to have my f prime of x. So let's start with the smallest. Here's how I would do it. I'm gonna start with my interval from negative infinity up to negative two right? And then I have my negative two. And then from negative two up to the next value, which was zero. So go to zero. 
and then I have my zero. And then I'm gonna go from zero up to my next critical point, which was two. And then I have my two, look how long this crazy thing is. And then I'm gonna go from two, and then there's no more critical points, so I'm just going off to infinity. And I can erase this extra. Okay, so what do we know about the derivative at negative two? We know that it, it is undefined or does not exist. So negative two and two. Let's go over here and put that one's undefined. And then we know that the derivative is zero right here. Now we use test points to figure out if the derivative is positive or negative in these intervals. So let's do a really huge negative number. So you're gonna have a negative on top. We square a big number, makes it positive minus four. That's still gonna be positive. So negative over positive is negative. Remember, we don't care what the number is. We just care if it's negative or positive. Now let's do a number in here. Negative one's probably a good one. So negative one here, it's gonna be negative. Negative one squared minus four it's doing the cube root, so I'm allowed to do that. I can have a negative under here. So negative, negative makes a positive. And now let's plug in a one. One on top is positive. One minus four, I'm gonna have a negative on bottom. So positive over a negative is a negative. And then two to infinity, super big number, divided by super big positive number, minus four. And that's still gonna be positive. Okay, so here's what we have going on. I have negative slope and then undefined. So this is gonna be some type of corner or cusp. And then positive. So I'm going down, probably sharp corner, and then up, and then a slope of zero, and then down again, and then probably another sharp corner, and then up. So you can see here, my negative slope, my positive slope, you can tell what's going down, it, what's going on. It turns around, goes up, and you can now say we have, and if you need to write this on the side over here, go ahead, sorry, I don't know if I gave you enough room. We have a minimum at x, equals, so the minimum is right here at negative two. Negative two, are there any other minimums? Yes, there is right here at negative two and x equals two. Now we use our justification and we say, because, I'm gonna abbreviate here, because f prime changes sign from, and then it's changing sign, it's going down and then up. That's how you get a minimum. From negative, I'll abbreviate from negative to positive. There we go. And now let's see, do we have a maximum? Yes, we had the maximum right here. It was going up and then down. So we have a max at x equals zero because, and then we say f prime changes. So what did the sign do? Oh, changes sign from, and so if we have a maximum, it's because it was going up and then down. So from, oops, m positive to negative. There we go. That is the first derivative test. First derivative test. Now be careful that you, are, the chart just helps you keep track of your information. It is not justification for why you have a max or min. This statement right here, F prime changes sign from positive to negative, or excuse me, from, or I mean from negative to positive, sorry. So when F prime changes sign from negative to positive, that's your justification. The chart is not. Chart just helps you organize it all. Now, one of the cool things about the first derivative test, you don't even have to know what the graph looks like, and you'll be able to tell where the min and max is just by using this calculus. So here, I've got the graph. I'm gonna drag this up here. The graph of this thing, I'll pull it over here so you can see how it matches up with the negative two and two being the undefined derivative points and being the minimums, and then the max at x equals zero. So kind of cool. We, we hit it spot on by doing this. All right, let's do one more of these because this is a little bit strange. We have a weird situation going on here. Sometimes you're gonna have a critical point that you think's a critical point, but you have to double check because if the value you find is not part of H of C, then it's not a critical point and it can't be a max or min. This is a great example of showing you what I'm talking about here. So let's first figure out what H prime of X is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause my recording. You can do this on your own. Pause now if you don't wanna see the, the derivative just pop up here. Okay, so I've got the derivative all simplified here. I'm now going to factor the numerator just so that I can have, let's see here, eight minus x over four minus x quantity squared. Okay, so now we have, what are our critical points? We have, if we figure out where the, de the uh, derivative equals zero, this would give us x equals zero. We'd also have x equals eight. And then this one, it, we'd have x equals four. But the problem is that four is 
not part of the domain. If you look at the original function, if you plug a four in here, you get a, a zero on bottom. That's a vertical asymptote going on right there at x equals four. So this is not a critical point. I'm gonna abbreviate that CP. It is not a critical point. So it cannot be a max or min if it's not a critical point. It's not a critical point because it's not in the domain, but we're still going to use it in our chart. So that seems kind of crazy. We're gonna use all three of these in our chart. So why don't you set up your chart? I'm gonna pause the recording of the video so my chart here will just show up with all three of these values. So I have my chart here and I wrote right away that four is undefined and you have to remember that this is not going to be a max or min. It is not a critical point. So that's important to remember that. Sometimes you might circle it or even write not a critical point, not a max or min. So I put it on my chart anyway though, because I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't. It really does help us. So let's do some test points here. Oh, wait, wait. This derivative here is zero, right? Zero and then eight, the derivative is also zero at those two points. Okay, so now we're gonna use the derivative, remember, so it's this thing. Well, we're using the derivative to figure out the sign, and since we're squaring the denominator, that right there, that's always going to be positive because we're squaring it. So you really only have to check the numerator, that's awesome. So we're just gonna plug the points in here, it makes it so much easier. So super big negative number, eight minus negative will be positive, times a negative, so that one's negative. Plug in a number between zero and four, how about a one? One, eight minus one, that's positive. Okay, not a critical point, so we're gonna ignore this part. Then we go from four to eight, so how about five? That's probably easy. Five here, eight minus five is still positive, so that's positive. And then we go from eight to infinity. Eight to infinity, super big positive, and then eight minus super big positive, so that's gonna be a negative times a positive, that one's negative. Okay, so now you can see what we've got going on. Down, up, up, down. So we have a min at x equals zero and a max at x equals eight. And if we use their justification, remember that, it's because f prime changes sign from negative to positive. And then we do the same thing with our justification down here that for our maximum, f prime changes sign from positive to negative. So what does this graph look like? It's this weird thing right here. So you can see we have a minimum at x equals zero right there. We have a max at x equals eight. There's our max if we go all the way out here to eight. And then you have this weird vertical asymptote going on because that was where we had our undefined uh, function. But this helped us know in between here, it helped us be able to determine if it was a min or a max for these points. So it's important that you still use these undefined points inside your interval to help you out. Okay, we've almost covered everything. Last thing is just to make sure you understand that the when it's asked, the question asks, what is the maximum value? That is not the same thing as where is the maximum. The difference is, where is the maximum is what we've been doing, where you say x equals and then a point, I'll just call that point c. That's where is the maximum. It's the the x value of that min or max. But when you say what is the maximum value, that is a y value. So that's asking for you to take the function and plug in where it is. You need the y value, not the x value. And the bummer is that when you have a we have a multiple choice exam that you're going to be you'll be taking at the end of the year, when you have one of those, you're going to see sometimes this question where it says maximum value but one of the multiple choice options will be this one. And that stinks because you think you got it right, you did everything right, and then you just didn't read the problem carefully enough. You answer, you circle the answer right there because you see that you have it and it, you had to still plug it in and find the Y value. Okay, I think we've got it all now. We've covered it for the first derivative test. So rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in the next lesson.